Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A database is designed to store information and retrieve it at a later point in time. The many types of objects in a database work together to allow you to do this. However, in order to create an effective and useful database, you must learn how to create and design many different types of objects. This is one of the primary reasons that learning database design is more difficult than learning many other types of applications. Now you will examine the various types of objects within a basic database and what their purpose is within the overall scheme of database design. The first and most fundamental object type within a database is the table. Tables are the building blocks of almost all the other types of database objects. Tables contain all of the information that is to be stored, manipulated, and retrieved. Therefore, almost everything in a database is fundamentally dependent on the tables and their structure. So while tables are often the database objects with which new users are most familiar, it is important to not approach table design haphazardly. Errors made during the creation and design of the tables will often cause problems in the functionality of the related objects, forcing you to go back and redesign or edit the tables and the other related objects if you proceed with your database design too quickly. Actually, creating well-designed data tables and joining them appropriately is one of the most difficult aspects of database design. It is certainly the aspect with which many users have the most difficulty understanding. It's also the most important aspect of database design. The next type of database object that we'll discuss is the query. The purpose of a query is to extract only the data that you want or need to view from the tables. These objects are the heart of database design and the whole point of using databases. The queries provide the data that's needed by the other database objects. They often work in the background. So mastering queries will also be an important part of creating a functional database. While queries are mainly used to extract specific data for reporting, you'll also learn how they can be used to modify data as well. Now the next type of database object to review is the form. Forms are often used as user interfaces for the associated underlying tables. They're also used to control the flow of the database program for users. A form typically allows users of the database to edit data or click other buttons that may launch reports and perform other user-related tasks within the database. Forms are the face of your database, as they are often all that the user will see and interact with when using a finished database application. The next type of database object to discuss is the report. Reports are a commonly used way of showing data that is extracted from the tables by the queries in a more printer-friendly format than the query itself can provide. Reports can also perform secondary calculations on the analysis that they get from the queries, making them very powerful data analysis tools. Now the next type of database object to examine is the macro. Macros are small bits of visually created programming that help automate processes within a database. For example, if you wanted a user to click a button in a form to launch a report, you could create a macro that automatically runs a report. You could then attach the macro to the buttons on click event so that when a user clicks the button within the form, it runs the macro, thus running the report. Now the final type of database object is the module. And modules are similar in purpose to macros, however they're created in a non-visual environment. When creating modules, you actually have to type code into a separate Microsoft Visual Basic application window. It uses a sister language of the Visual Basic language called Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA, to create programs that can be much more complicated in nature than the ones that are created by macros. However, many improvements have been added to the functionality of the macros in Access so that the usage of modules will rarely be needed by the typical Access database designer. Many database designers will not make any use of modules, but they can be valuable for professional database designers.
Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.